Ready to learn how to add a color fill to your wood laser engravings? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to prep your wood to stop color bleeding, as well as add multiple colors, including in those wide spaces. We're going to need some tight grained hardwood like maple, cherry, or walnut. I ran to my local lumber mill and I picked up some half inch surfaced cherry. It's a bit more expensive, but very convenient and a time saver. My studio is located in the heart of Lowell at Western Ave Studios, a converted mill building housing over 400 artists. I use a bandsaw to cut my wood into four inch square pieces. A quick pass on the belt sander will smooth the sides. A decent depth is important as we'll have to do some sanding and we don't want to lose our design. And we'll raster and grave using a speed of 25, power of 100, DPI of 600, and Jarvis dithering. This took just over six minutes for two passes to get a depth of about a sixteenth of an inch. A quick sand with 220 grit to remove the sticky burn residue from the surface. I'll use a few blasts of an air compressor to remove the dust and clean the wood. I really love how cherry burns. Okay, sealing the wood grain is critical to a successful color fill. I use shellac spray or in a can as my go-to sealer. You'll want at least two heavy coats to seal those grains both on the surface and the exposed grain inside the engraving. You want to wait at least 15 minutes between each coat. Also, the longer you can let this dry before you color fill, the better. Overnight is best if possible. I'm gonna cover my coaster in a clear tabletop epoxy, so I'll want to tape off the back with painter's tape. I'll use a cheap acrylic paint, a jar for water, plastic top as my paint palette, and some small pieces of paper towel with brushes. Rip your paper towel into small pieces and pre-soak. I'm going to fast forward this first coat. I'll go slower and explain the process in the next coat. Now let this dry thoroughly. This is now dry and you can see some spots that are missing paint. The white is discolored from the laser burning and you can see the grains in the wider areas. When using light colors, you'll have to color fill two or three times. Darker colors will only need one to two coats. I said I use cheap acrylic paint for a reason. They have a higher water content and less pigment. Now that might not sound good. However, it's less likely to leave a stain on the surface of your wood if you missed an area with the sealer or the sealer is a little thin. Take your time working the paint into the engraving. Sometimes little bubbles form along the edges, which then dries, leaving a little area that's missing paint. Really load the paint up. Although if you're using multiple colors, then make sure there's room for more paint. When wiping the paint off, don't push hard. A light swipe down, then to the side works best. Finish up with a clean, wet piece and now swipe towards the engraving. This cleans the edges and pushes some of the paint back. Load your small flat brush and in circles and dab, Push the paint into every part of the engraving, but work in small sections so the paint won't dry before you wipe the surface. Let this dry thoroughly. I'm adding black to the legs. 
I really like the first coat to be white, then go back with other colors. It really makes those colors pop. Dab and push the paint in. Then swipe away from the other colors. If it mixes too much, you can always go back with the first color. Now, if there's still areas within the wider engraving part, just go back with a small brush and add some more paint. If you're careful, you won't need to swipe this time. Do this for all of your colors. Here's another critical tip. Let this dry thoroughly. If any of the paint is even a tiny bit damp when you sand, the dust will completely embed into the paint and you'll have to recolor all over again. Here, I use 180 grit paper to remove the surface paint and the shellac. Since it was applied heavy in some areas, it may gunk up a bit, but sand until the natural wood is exposed. Don't push down hard or you might sand off the engraving. Instead, let the sandpaper do all the work. All right, moment of truth here. Use the air compressor to blast the dust out of the engraving. I am now adding the red spot to the head. I actually should have done this when I did the legs, but as long as I'm careful, it'll be fine. Just remember, we removed the sealer from the surface, so if I get paint on it, it could stain the wood. I could leave it like this, especially if it was on dark wood, like walnut. It's quite elegant, but I want a striking contrast. I'm going to paint the wood areas inside the grain black. You'll need a very small brush and a light touch to paint the raised areas. If you mess up, it's okay. You can always go back with white and touch up. Just take your time. I find if I start in the middle with my brush, then lift up as I'm going towards the edge, I have a lot more control. Since this is a coaster, I want to cover the top with a tabletop epoxy. It's self-leveling so it will fill in the engraving and leave a smooth surface those brush marks within the engraving will disappear and it will be waterproof. This is the kind of epoxy you use on bar tops. A blast with a butane torch helps remove the bubbles. If you're new to using epoxy, I'll leave some links in the description below to some beginner epoxy videos that will help get you going. Then inspect for dust and debris. You can remove it with a toothpick. Now let this dry for two days. To remove the tape and resin drips, 
set your heat gun on its stand. Start peeling the tape from the middle, then gently press it back so it doesn't touch the heat gun. Turn the heat gun on and pass just one side at an angle over the heat. Constantly move the coaster. You don't want to overheat and burn any one area. The tape and the drips will just peel away. Then just do a light sand on the back. Be sure to have a soft rag on your sanding table so you don't damage the epoxy. Finally, add an all natural wood finish to the back. I use the same wood hydrator and conditioner that I use on all my charcuterie boards. And here is a look at the different stages. From a simple engrave, two added color fill, third touch of color, painted raised areas to the finished coaster with epoxy. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Next time, we'll be filling in those gnarly knot holes with epoxy on your charcuterie board. We'll see you then.